Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad you're with us today to stay curious. Today, we got a special show about a special NASA illustrator from the 60s and 70s named Don Mackey. And you're going to enjoy some of Mr. Mackey's work, like this uh, cutout view of the VAB that was quite pioneering back in its day in the 1960s, as well as Don Mackey, McKee, as I think I pronounce it, Don McKee's whimsical Christmas cards that he drew up and become quite popular in the 1960s during the heart of the race to the moon with the Soviet Union. So hope you enjoy this special Christmas time. Stay curious with uh, about Don Mackey's Christmas cards literally out of this world. Uh, Don Mackey, I tried to look up a photograph of him. Uh, couldn't find one. I've called Mr. Hugh Harris, the voice of NASA. He uh, didn't know much about Mr. Mackey and our great friend and wonderful artist, Chris Callie. I gave a shout out to you, Chris, about anything you're, you may have known about Mr. Mackey as he was a contemporary of the great Paul Callie, Chris's dad, and one of the first NASA artists out there. So did my research and wanted to throw this together, though, <clears throat> for to celebrate uh, the Christmas times, uh, Happy Hanukkah, and whatever you like celebrating this time of year. We don't want to insult any anybody out there, but we're uh, this is Christmas time uh, to many of us, and certainly uh, 1960s was a time to celebrate uh, uh, with the wonderful space missions that were going on to take us to the moon and beyond. Uh, Don Mackey was an India Atlantic resident, which is just south of uh, Titusville and uh, actually Cape Canaveral and Cocoa Beach further south. He was a chief technical illustrator at Kennedy Space Center and was known for his humorous space-themed Christmas cards. Mackey died in 1983, but his retro space Christmas cards live on. A 1998 article on Mackey uh, was written by former Florida Today columnist Milt Solomon, who's a, a quite a, uh, a well-known newspaper guy around here. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, and that's where one of his stories uh, I got some information about, as well as the former uh, director of the Air Force Space and Missile Museum at Cape Canaveral, uh, Emily Perry. Uh, she uh, did some research on him and found out that Mackey began sketching back in grammar school in 1963. An article about him said he studied in Chicago Art Institute and worked as an illustrator in New Orleans, California, and Huntsville, Alabama before landing in KSC. Uh, so these cards seem to highlight a magical time on the Space Coast when NASA was racing to put a man on the moon. And we're going to look at some of his early uh, sketches, non-Christmas cards. But his cards are known for hidden images and messages, uh, what uh, artists like Chris Cowley call little Easter eggs in their artwork. They might put uh, a picture of themselves or some message in there. A pink elephant, a dinosaur, and monkeys. It's believed the artist even snuck a few images of himself in his artwork. So sit back, enjoy a little Christmas time holiday cheer as we look at the artwork of Don McKee, a NASA artist of some uh, repute. Here's the article by Doug Lang in there that talks about uh, uh, the uh, Air Force Base uh, uh, Director Emily Perry in the article's uh, written by um, the, uh, no, who am I thinking of? Uh, Milt, Milt Salomon, Milt Salomon. And we're going to feature Milt Salomon and some of those print journalists one day with Mr. Hugh Harris on a Stay Curious. Uh, McKee did an original seven astronaut pencil sketch uh, book uh, that I've actually have had my hands on in this museum in some of our collections. Uh, take note of this, uh, Chris Callie, and there's a John Glenn sketch uh, in his style, which is much the, the similar style of uh, Paul Callie. 
This is some of the other work that uh, he did depicting a lunar landing. All right. And uh, there you have Marty. That gives my way of saying hello to you. He worked on the Grumman Lunar Module. That's an early view of the Grumman Lunar Module. Marty, how you doing? And how would I know that? I'm doing fine. And you would know that very easily just by the uh, front hatch, which this one is round and it should be close to square. That's right, and it's got some. Uh, it does have four legs up here. Look at that lander uh, ladders off to. Uh, uh, they really have to swing their leg off the porch to get on there. And as you're going to see in all these lunar Christmas cards, they depict the lunar mountains as being very sharp, much like the Rocky Mountains. But when we got there, they're not. They're very soft, hummocky, more like the Appalachian Mountains, beaten down by erosion of micrometeorites. So we'll be pointing that out as we're looking at this work here. Uh, McKee also did a great number of uh, first day postal cards. Uh, these uh, postal covers were very huge back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and into the 70s and have kind of lost their luster. They were work, works of art like this. Um, <clears throat> and that's beautiful. I like that perspective, Marty, of the Saturn V lifting off away from us in the upper left there. Merry Christmas, 1968, Apollo 8, that we talked about the Apollo 8 mission with uh, Nick Thomas on Monday, Stay Curious. And you can find our whole archives on Facebook. This is our 714th episode, Marty, and every one of them is on Facebook. And uh, we're coming up on almost a year's worth on YouTube, where we prefer you to watch it on YouTube. Yes, Marty. This one also has a double cancellation. It has December 25th, 1968, and then 1973. Oh, cool. All right. And uh, and the cancellation is important. Of course, November, December 25th, 68, this was not uh, this a Christmas card there. Though the Apollo 8 uh, was launched December uh, 7th and returned on the uh, 11th. No, that's not enough time. It had been the uh, 13th or 14th. This is what uh, Don McKay was known for at the space, McKee, uh, and there is a M-A-M-A-C-K-A-Y, and he did spell the lowercase k, if you're wondering if I made a typo. Uh, this is what he was known for as an illustrator at NASA, doing work like this for brochures, manuals, uh, and public relations events. And of course, uh, Marty, what are we looking at there? And what rooms were you inside that cutout, if any? Oh, I said several rooms. Several in the low bay and uh, in the high bay also. But it shows the Santa Five rolling either in or out. Uh, should be Bay D, I believe. And I don't think we ever went into day Bay D <laughs> with the uh, uh, with Apollo. Very unique. Uh the, you got your arrow there to show where the LCC is, the, the Launch Control Center, uh, where you sat. There you go, right above my head. You had to have some VIP passes to get on top of that to watch a launch, though, right? Well, you had to be a crew member, family member, plus the VIPs from within NASA, for okay. tour guides and assistants. So here we're using a, uh, a drawing. 50 years old, so almost 60 years old. From there, we go to uh, another first day issue on September 29, 1967, uh, an anniversary of one of these accomplishments. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, pencil work there, working uh, uh, with the whites, creating the darks and, and uh, around the white. That's very hard to do. Again, another beautiful illustration of Don McKee's work. That's July 24th, 1985 celebration. That sounds like a bumper uh, launch celebration, Marty. What were you saying? I was going to say Tom Salentano just notified us that uh, Apollo 8 was December 21st through 27th. Thank you, Tom. After I, was, uh, I was thinking of... Uh, Apollo 17. Glad you're watching, Tom. Thank you. There's this beautiful green screen that we got behind us here. And uh, uh, once again, we're 
We're grateful for our Streamlabs program and your contributions out there that allow us to do uh, the green screen programs here. Merry Christmas from Cape, from Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Now that's a nice pencil rendering. Uh, Doug Forrest is looking at that. Hi, Doug, in L.A. This is the type of work that Doug does, uh, spending hours at a time getting those trees in, for example. Uh, and uh, uh, I like that. That's a nice perspective. Kind of gives you a flavor that it's nighttime, doesn't it, Marty? Yeah, the trees lit up there in the middle. Yeah, you can tell it's also early. It doesn't have the flag or the uh, NASA logo on it. Right, right. Good point. Doesn't have anything on it. Yep. No NASA logo, no uh, gigantic American flag on there. And uh, he's made the backgrounds all dark and black, like Doug Forrest in his work does. Uh, Apollo Art is where you can find some of Doug's work. And greetings from Florida. Season's greetings there. You see Santa Claus fishing. Uh, he's got a bird on his pole there. You got gators. What else you see there, Marty? What's that sign say? Something about Camp Kennedy, but oh, Cape Kennedy, Florida, but can't read a book. Merritt Island Wildlife yes, Refuge Island Wildlife. is one of them. Yeah. Yeah. He's got That's stuff good. hidden in the trees, a squirrel there for Carlton Bailey. Yeah. Hi, Carlton. Yeah, raccoons, cats. Ra raccoon. Yeah. You don't say cats, do you? Yeah. <laughs> a cat? Kitty yeah. cat? <laughs> anyway let's that's some nice that's like a uh, uh real pen and ink etching there oh yeah there's kitty cat all right yeah, sweet cool, yeah babies and everything there else. look at all that work there everything native to florida there and then marty and i were enjoying this one tell them what's going on there marty well you got a couple of aliens on the rover Oh, well, no, that's oh, Santa right. and reindeer. Oh, Santa. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. And they're yeah, waving right. goodbye to the astronauts blasting off the moon. Because he's Santa Claus. He's going to use the rover now to deliver gifts, it looks like. They got a fire there on the lunar surface. Uh, command modules up above seasons, uh, the word seasons. We got the command modules here. Yeah, your point. I like that. They have a pretty accurate looking space shuttle there under the tree the flags there and uh we were looking at this earlier and marty said the earth looks like it's got uh starlink constellations all over it uh because you don't see a sharp edge there and uh and there's another one that's like that a cross up in the sky love it love it love it yeah. oh you were going back yeah go ahead because there is an alien right there Oh, there is hitchhiking on the back of the lunar rover. How sweet is that? That's a nice rendition of the lunar rover. Uh, all right, we're got going backwards there. Okay, now we're getting into the color. We're celebrating Don McKee, the 1960s illustrator for NASA, and he did these whimsical, beautiful artwork on postcards and if you're lucky to own some of these postcards they're worth some money i meant to look it up on on uh, ebay which some of them were trading for uh but here's one of the the, the favorites of his you'll see this a lot he calls this missile land missile land and it features a houseboat called the indian river queen the flying saucers powered by florida swamp gas as you see there in the foreground the artist himself is on the porch beside the pelican. All right. Uh, so he's on the porch by the pelican, and that's the only rendition of what I know he looks like. A Christmas tree is inside. Santa's on the roof in long underwear playing cards with aliens. And his outfit is hanging on the clothesline there in the back. Point that out, Marty. So he must be playing Texas Hold'em with these aliens. I hope he's winning uh because if he's not we won't get our, our our gifts delivered there's his santa outfit yep there they are up there santa out. yeah they even have a light hanging above the tree there uh over there um 
On the lower right are leprechauns and an alligator in a Santa hat. Those are right over there behind me. I gotta get out of the way for that. Yeah, there you go. There's the leprechauns and the Santa hat. So, a lot going on there in Don McKee's artwork. Another real popular one is this one on a postcard. Spaceport in the moon. It shows Santa with two aliens on a Model T sleigh. Model T is an old-timey car, folks. You millennials out there. Uh, <clears throat> that Henry Ford's first car was a Model T is what he built. Uh, there's a surfboard on the back. A sign on the moon says Snoopy was here. That's in the upper left right below the Model T. Running away from the reindeer is a little dog in a space helmet. The two aliens are digging up gold. An astronaut on the right has a box of moon gold. And the astronaut on the left is filming this scene with a TV camera. And perched on his back is a parrot with a space helmet. All right. Uh, parrot must be thought to be a real southern thing there, Marty. It's like a command module landing also. What did you say? It's like a command module coming in for a landing. Oh, right, indeed. I gotta get the arrow. There's the launch. Oh, okay, it's not a landing, it's a launch. Yeah, yeah, that's the right. he's, he, he's showing the uh, Kennedy Space Center on the bottom and then on the moon where the astronauts are. And that's really a tribute to the Apollo program for sure, uh, as you're looking at that, uh, except the aliens. Uh, always depicted as little green men back in those days. Here's a beautiful one. A capsule, uh, this, uh, uh, this one uh, shows um, the spaceport below in a capsule. Uh, three aliens wearing Santa hats uh, with a, um, in a sleigh that says wide load. The astronauts are in the in the capsule are waving, and one of them is filming the scene with a TV camera. Uh, Marty pointed out in our pre-production meeting that they got one out the docking tunnel and one out the hatch. At the back of the capsule is an antenna with an owl perched on it. And uh, heading to the moon. That's a cool-looking rendition of the Apollo Command Module, though, used on Christmas. And this is a capsule on the moon. Shows a lot of happy green aliens greeting the capsule that's landed on the moon. The capsule sits on a lunar landscape filled with craters and mountains. And a big old wall there, like the straight wall. The earth and a bright shining star, like the Star of Bethlehem, are in the background. Coming out of the capsule is Santa Claus wearing a bag of toys. In a Christmas tree. He's carrying a bag of toys in a Christmas tree. And Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is peeking his head out the capsule door. You just barely see that. All right. The greeting on the card says, Merry Christmas from Cape Canaveral. And again, you've got sharp craters on the moon. And you got that, that uh, orange and white checkerboard there, Marty. Which I'm going to mention here in another few minutes. But I'm not sure why NASA would go with that orange and white checkerboard. Or, or the artist Don McKay. McKee, I mean. Go ahead, Marty. Okay. Uh, to me, this looks like a Tampa Bay Bucks uh, flag. Oh, the Tampa Bay Bucks <laughs> flag's coming out of there. All right. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Very good. Who we got watching today, Marty? Give a shout out to our friends on Stay Curious Enjoying our well, we look at some whimsical uh, holiday cards. Yeah, we have uh, Doug Boris. Hey, Dennis Doug. Marlboro. Gary Jarrell, Steve Hammer, Space Explorer W, Tom Celentano, William Whiting, Christopher Mick, Mark Usiak, Pamela Civic, Hazel Banks, Cedric4242, Margot Watson, and Science Skull. Science Skull. All right. Well, thank you all for watching, and we know everybody's going to get busy, so Marty and I do wish you a very Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, if that's your thing, and Festivus for the rest of us. Right, Marty? Uh, and uh, we do sincerely know that we're blessed to uh, what has happened this year, particularly at the American Space Museum, where we've 
We've raised our level of involvement in the space community. And it's all because of wonderful people like Margot Watson out there sharing the word out there, Tom Celentano uh, tuning in, Gary Gerald, faithful watcher out there, wonderful peanut farmer in Georgia. And we, of course, love all of our space uh, geeks that visit the American Space Museum, including Tony Achilles, who's probably watching out there, Marty. Uh, so thank you all for a wonderful year. And we are poised for a great 2023 with your help. So well, let's get some more greeting cards up there. And uh, the next one, uh, again, a on the moon. Uh, Shows four aliens singing Christmas carols, one playing a trumpet, three reaching out of a moon crater with their guitar, plus one alien and one astronaut directing the choir. Got to have a choir, Marty. Were you ever in a choir singing? No. They asked me to hum, but even I can't even hum in tune. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I was in choirs, and I loved, I like the Christmas music. I do. I got to... Uh, and it's it's a fun time of year. It gets you in a happy mood. What were you pointing out there, Marty, on this Don um, McKee? Yeah, we have three aliens uh, in the audience. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the background, Santa and his reindeer are flying in a lunar landscape with a banner that reads Merry Christmas from Cape Kennedy, Florida, and Happy New Year with the Earth in the background. Uh, Marty, what did we say about that, that Earth? No clouds. No clouds. All right. And the only time in human history where the earth has not been covered in clouds. You'll see that a lot in the the 50s and 60s uh, and 40s artwork of space exploration where they don't put clouds anywhere. And, of course, you look at a picture that the astronauts have taken of the earth on the way to the moon and even orbiting. There's always clouds somewhere. And you got that. It's still not a sharp, thin blue line. Uh that is the only border that should matter on our planet. But uh, as Marty said, it looks like there's a, a, a whole constellation of fuzzy satellites orbiting us back then. But those sharp mountain peaks, again, uh, we didn't know the, how, how uh, that they're real hummocky and, and fluffy looking in reality. Yes, Marty. You have a guitar on the moon surface. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Here is another all-time favorite uh, that, again, with the orange and uh, white checkerboard, I always think of the University of Tennessee in the end zones of the football stadium called Dillon Stadium, where the football team plays. And uh, you all from Tennessee and, uh, and anybody that's been in roots for a team in the Southeast Conference of College Football, they're probably saying the same thing. Uh, so I'm not sure why that originated with Don and uh, I'd like to any of those artists out there to reach out and let me know. But uh, that's more traditional. You got two aliens on the back, one sitting with Santa. The reindeer uh, have got some sort of gear over their head there, Marty, I see. Rudolph's nose is red and uh, there's uh, waving, Ed White's waving at Rudolph as Jim McDivitt's peeking out the, the, the window out the hatch there uh and that's kind of interesting i'll bet this is very influenced by the gemini 4 mission marty that was in march 1965 because um he didn't open up the other hatch on there which you think an artist might do that to be easily but he's kind of showing it accurate there that uh, mcdivitt the commander on the left didn't open the hatch on that historic eva by ed white and, uh, you know, Happy New Year Moon is what it says there. Uh, again, in a, a reference to the space race. And getting at the end here of our special program on NASA illustrator Don McKee. Once again, if you do know anything about this artist, uh, you can send it to marq at americanspacemuseum.org. Merry Christmas from Missile Land, Florida. I always like calling it Missile Land or Rocket Ranch. Uh, kind of a contemporary look here where you've got the uh, moon or bust. Uh, you've got technicians underneath there. On the left-hand side, looks more like a still to me, Marty, than, but they're cooking up their own rocket fuel right there. And you see it's got 
uh, fuel uh, for uh, quadruple X there, kind of an allusion to uh, moonshine. And uh, a rocket's taken off there on the, the uh, into the blue horizon there. So, and from the moon, Merry Christmas from Cape Canaveral. There you've got an astronaut outside the moon who is directing a choir of weird looking aliens. Christmas tree in the back, star in the sky. There you got the earth again showing America. North America, again, no clouds, fuzzy uh, border <laughs> there. Um, and there, there's a simple little, like an oxygen tank of a scuba diver. They're basically saying we could live on the moon like that. Imagine having a big room like that to look out at the lunar uh, surface once we get there permanently. So, and you, they're obviously uh, in sync with an earthly choir on that uh, keyboard there. Uh, doesn't look too dissimilar to what we have here at the American Space Museum, Marty, except the, the uh, cathode ray tubes are a little bit smaller. So, uh, Marty, we got a comment or a question from our friends. I have a question from Neil 1030. Is this the last show of the year, of the week? Uh, good, good question, question, Neil. No, it's not. Uh, we're gonna have shows through Friday. Uh, Friday, I'm going to do a program on the Star of Bethlehem, a program I've done for over, fr frankly, 50 years in astronomy clubs. Uh, so we'll talk about the Star of Bethlehem on Friday because the museum is going to be open. Uh, and uh, Wednesday and Thursday, still kind of scratching my head like I was this morning. What are we going to come up with? So uh, thank you for uh, wanting to stay curious about the rest of the week. Uh, and, of course, if you don't catch it live, Catch the repeat shows on YouTube. So what have we got left here? Uh, that was the last uh, postcard image of there. A collage of Don McKay, McKee's work there. The moon. Uh, you don't see artwork like this at, to, frequently, do you, Marty, anywhere else? And uh, it might inspire some of you out there, including uh, our good friend Doug Forrest and Chris Kelly to... Uh, come up with some whimsical art for the holidays of 2023. And uh, it's fun to look back at our wonderful space program. You can see how space art uh, was beginning to be influenced by what we were doing to put a man on the moon in the 1960s. Glad that you have been with us today on Stay Curious. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Um, Marty, we don't have any guest book, do we? Wednesday or Thursday, scratching my head. Uh, and I might do the Star of Bethlehem show on Thursday. Uh, we'll put that up on Facebook. And then, uh, uh, but uh, it's it's a Star of Bethlehem show of, of uh, what was, what was it? Uh, was it a comet, meteor, uh, meteor storm, uh, or just a miracle in the sky? And uh, so we're going to enjoy looking at that in an astronomical way this week. So, Marty, on behalf of you, our wonderful staff here, good job on the Streamlabs. We're glad that everybody is uh, stay safe and uh, be kind to everybody the rest of this week. Uh, this is a, a few days before Christmas when everybody wants to get things done and can get impatient and uh, kind of take a cue from these space workers I've gotten to know, like Marty. You know, if, if it ain't ready, don't go, you know, and uh, if you're stressed out about something, my advice to you is go late, uh, leave early and make sure your car is not blocked. <laughs> OK, so uh, on behalf of our nonprofit museum here that for over two decades has been preserving the birth of the American space age. I'm Mark Marquez saying thank you for watching Stay Curious today, and we can't wait to see you tomorrow to bridge the space between us.